This year will go in the books as our busiest year ever. But before I jump right into the preserving, I think it's important to give you the context of what life was like for our family as we approached the gardening and preserving season this year. After buying our land last year, we started to build our dream home. Finally in May, almost one year later, it was getting close to being finished. My dream of having space to grow the garden I envisioned was coming to life as well. We prepped and planted in our 10,000 square foot garden. And yet, at the end of May, several months after our builder had estimated our home to be complete, it still wasn't finished. We were forced to move out of our rental home and we camped in the barn, dirt floor and all, for over a month as we waited for our house to reach a livable state. Even though we could have stayed at family or friends' houses while we waited, we had a vision and a goal for this year to grow and preserve a year's supply of vegetables and meat for our family. A goal like that takes a large amount of commitment and sacrifice. We knew if it was going to happen, we needed to live on our land. As we camped in the barn, we had no electricity, no kitchen, and no indoor plumbing. The barn roof was not as waterproof as we thought, and the first rainstorm we had soaked our tent, our clothes, and all of our sleeping bags. What we were grateful for was our family and being together, focused on one goal with very little distractions. During that month, we learned to be creative. I would harvest vegetables, make a makeshift kitchen area outdoors, then prepare them for preserving. I also did a lot of fermenting during this time since it required no electricity. Finally, in early July, we moved into our new home officially. It was five months after our builder had estimated the completion date to be. Instead of being in winter, as we had originally planned, our move-in happened during our busiest time of year. Luckily, the previous months of May and June were spent doing a lot more planting than preserving. We moved into our home just in time for the bulk of the preserving season to begin. Once the vegetables started to come, it never slowed down. But this was actually a huge blessing. Our hard work preparing, planting, watering, and weeding the garden started to pay off. With all the effort it takes to grow vegetables, we vowed not to let any go to waste. We preserved a little of our garden bounty every day. This is the secret to preserving a year's supply of food. You need to be consistent.
We came up with different ways to make it fun as a family. We would move a TV to the kitchen and watch a movie together as we worked. Sometimes we would just talk, and other times we would make it a game. I know. But it don't work. It's because you already have the onion air right there. You gotta go put them on somewhere else. There were times when we could work together during the day, and other times when the busyness of life left only the evening to do canning and preserving. Those nights were the hardest. I would work alone, my legs hurt, my feet were tired, and I wanted to sleep so badly. Many times I would stay up until two, three, or four in the morning finishing a batch of food. Spaghetti sauce going. This is the dark side of homesteading. <laughs> Say hi, Becky. <laughs> she's stretching her back because she's tired. <laughs> hi down there. <laughs> I need to get my kitchen cleaned up and I'm gonna be canning some diced tomatoes today and I'm also gonna start some chicken broth. I had some extra chicken carcasses in the freezer. I'm going to get that started as well. Try and, try and get all of that done within a couple hours here. Before I get started canning, I'm gonna do a little bit of cleaning here of the kitchen and then get to it. <laughs> Looks quite a bit better. At least I can work in here now. Um, by the time I finish, my kids are eating again. They're back there warming up some spaghetti. <laughs> so, <laughs> doesn't last long around here. But I'm gonna get started. Um, heating up my jars and heating up some water to skin these tomatoes just to dice tomatoes because they're super fast.
up the diced tomatoes. I got them all peeled and skinned and chopped in the pot. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put them in the canner. Doing pressure canning on these, you can do either or water bath or pressure canning. For either one of them, you always add the, some extra acid. Frenzied preserving times were met with less busy times and I would be able to catch up on sleep and get rejuvenated and motivated to do more. Even though there were moments of difficulty, I felt a deep sense of purpose. Over the last century, the promise of easy, fast, and cheap industrial foods erased the age-old art of preserving. While cheap and fast food seem like a good thing to so many, we now see all the health problems that have followed the industrialization of the food we eat. Like so many others, my health declined from eating these heavily processed and chemical laced foods. I was ignorant for a time, but grateful that I got woken up to the unhealthy food I was eating. I didn't want to let others control what I put in my body and learn how to grow and preserve food over the last 15 years. Every year, as I learned more, grew more, and preserved more, I felt as though I was doing what I was intended to do. It's not easy to grow and preserve food, but many worthwhile things in life take patience and endless effort. Little by little, we are getting better at putting up food. We aren't perfect, and we haven't mastered growing everything we eat but most of the fun and joy is in the journey. And I can't wait to see where that journey leads us next.